Well, well, here we go again on another road and into an uncharted territory for myself personally. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my first review of episode one of Supernatural season eight. It sucks right now. I know that. Um, it might suck for a lot longer, but trust me on this, it gets better. Are you sure about that? Thank you to all of you who have been waiting patiently for me to come back to start reviewing this again. Uh, admittedly, Season 7 took a lot out of me, and so did the wedding season, so... I'm happy to be back because this is an uncharted territory. At the same time, I am a little bit hesitant because Season 8 to 10 is very... Blah, 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 kind of territory for me. I remember a lot of what happens in 8, but... This is also where Castiel's powers just went off the fucking rails in terms of who actually can keep the consistency of it. There were some good storylines, there were some bad storylines, but the number one word that keeps in my mind when it comes to these three seasons is forgettable. I don't remember them. Maybe it's just trying to keep 300 plus episodes of content in your brain is a little bit hard. That has always been my feeling for season 8, 9, and 10, so... I'm ready to be surprised. So we start off with the first episode, which essentially is a retake on Lazarus Rising. This is Lazarus Rising almost to a T. Just a little bit less dramatic, but also opens up a little bit more questions. Dean comes back. Obviously, it looks a little bit worse for wear, but he eventually makes his way to this spot, which happens to be the wheel that has been used in so many different episodes of Supernatural, going all the way back to season one. So it's always fun to see the same sets used again. And then Benny comes out. The vampire who I don't know if they thought we would remember this dude from season two because I did the immediate upon immediately seeing him was like hey that's the vampire guy from season two was his name Benny as the episode progresses you go through these flashbacks and you find out how these two work together to get out of purgatory while leaving Castiel behind you know after all of the development and everything we had with C with Castiel like very haphazardly put together at the end of season seven we have now tossed him away again and then dean finds out that sam just kind of didn't give a shit now there is a two-way street to this sam was lost he had no one no bobby no no one to have any form of i had no one no one and for the first time in my life i was completely alone and honestly i i didn't exactly have a road map so yeah i, I fixed at the Impala and I just drove. So I can understand somewhat the lostness and I can understand Dean's kind of grievances considering, you know, their history of what they've done. After you look for me. But then Dean also comes off as quite a bit of a dick throughout the whole fucking episode. And also, you know, he didn't try and get his brother out of the cage. Obviously, it's a different situation, but both are the negators in this episode. And their banter is quite bleh for it. However, we get to see the Hunter's Cabin for the first time. I actually got to see this in person when I was working on Yellow Jackets recently. And this random wackadoo cabin in the middle of nowhere just so happens to have electricity, water, and cable, and internet. And obviously we would take shit like this for granted when we would watch this show. But the big things about this is Dean confronts Sam with the fact that he never helped Kevin. And that is the one thing that all grievances aside about not going to get Dean, not helping out Kevin was pretty big. A pretty big oof. And you find out that Kevin's been on the run from Crowley. He has figured out a little bit of what the tablet means, and also possibly the means in closing hell. All the while, his girlfriend uh, turns out to be owned by a demon, and I just love how the roommate just doesn't do anything about someone coming close to her. He's like, okay, sure, I'll die now. Shut up, bitch. But then we get to go to the church. And what better way to talk about that church than to go there? And this right here is the church where Kevin Tran's girlfriend met her unfortunate end at the hands of Crowley. Now, apologies if it's a little windy, but uh, 
My wife is actually doing this video over here. She wanted to get a little closer, but with all the trees above us here, I didn't want anything to fall on her. So this is kind of the best shot you get. But this is in fact where a majority of the episode takes place at this old heritage church here in Cloverdale. This church has been used for many productions. Supernatural used it a lot of times. In fact, I would bet dollars to donuts that they filmed the finale of season 13 in here. You remember where Lucifer and Dean had that incredibly bad, ass poor super saiyan fight in here i think it was inside this church along that lines anyways like i said this church has been used for many different productions and they use the grounds for other parts of the episode i'm pretty certain that that phone call that benny had while being at a funeral it was probably filmed just over there if i were to take a guess of how they filmed these days they would have filmed the gas station bit at the beginning of the day then they would have come up here shot benny's funeral scene then shot the boys coming into here and then they would have done the day for night stuff on the inside leading into actual night when crowley kills kevin's girlfriend and the boys escape with kevin as i've pointed out to you guys before the supernatural has been filmed in a lot of different places around here but this one's kind of special because i get to see this one quite often cloverdale also is a very low-key important part of the show because in fact where they filmed the gas station scene that area is gone, that building's no longer there, but it was actually very close to where they filmed a large part of the finale of Supernatural season 15, episode 19, where Jack and Sam and Dean have that conversation in the middle of the road. That's downtown Cloverdale. Anyways, just thought I'd show you guys off this church, and it probably will crop up again in this show because as Supernatural has shown, they not only like to reuse people, they love to reuse locations. Overall, this episode sets up the stakes, which Thank God. After season six's dismal setup, and season seven's kind of okay setup, season eight lays out the facts. They're gonna try and close hell. Crowley's the villain, and he's willing to kill innocent people. He is now no longer their friend. Did you pretty much rehash a lot of episode one from season four? A bit with a little bit less zest. Instead, replacing Castiel with Benny. We need to talk about Kevin is a decent starter from a new writer, Jeremy Carver, and a whole new direction and a whole new means of restarting the supernatural train. Again, it is not as gripping as other season starters have been, but it also is nowhere near as dire or boring as a drab as a lot of others have been. I feel this is a very middle of the road episode with some decent fights, some decent interactions, some maybe a little bit off-brand humor, you know I'm not gay, right? But also some moments that make me personally laugh. Trust me on this, it gets better. It's not superb, it's not crap, it's not excellent, but it's not drab. So in the end, I'm gonna give this episode a four out of seven. Woo! We've done our first episode, everyone. I'm gonna try and keep using clips throughout just to see how long YouTube can go without giving me copyright bullshit or Sony Vegas having a goddamn migraine every time I edit with it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this first review. It's good to be back. I'm excited to watch episode two now. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. And as the tradition, give me your guys' thoughts about episode two and I'll read those off in the next review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. If you've never actually seen any of these reviews before, I have a plethora. We're now in the final three seasons of Supernatural that I have not done episode reviews for, so. We're on the final 69. I counted. It's actually 69. Nice. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.